What's up, y'all? So we got to talk about this Piper Lewis situation because this is what we not going to do. Fall in love with me. I introduce her to the game and let her thug with me. She be like Bunny and Clyde. She even clutching me. I feel like it's do or die. She give her soul to me. She want to be close to me. Oh, she say she fuck with me the long way. She say she going to run my back. I had a long day. She say, baby, I ain't going to lead you down the wrong way. Okay, so I had to hurry up and hop on this video. My cousin literally just told me about it. Like, literally just told me about it. I did a little research, but honestly, the small details do not matter to me. That is not the point. That is not why I'm bringing this before you. It's the restitution for me. It's the restitution and the fact that this is wrong on so many levels and the fact that since I, too, am a victim of sexual assault and sexual abuse and rape, I feel like no, no, no. This, this what we not, this what we not gonna do. And for those of y'all who don't know, Piper Lewis is she's now seventeen, but she was um, accused and charged of in, uh, uh, involuntary manslaughter for stabbing the guy who was raping her multiple times and killed him. So she was ordered to pay his family one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in restitution, but he repeatedly raped her. I'm going to play this news clip, and then I'm going to give my opinion, and I'm going to tell you right the fuck now. I'm probably going to cuss a lot. I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be loud because I do not play about these types of things, especially when it comes to teens. And if you get in my goddamn comments with that bullshit, your comment going to get deleted. I am not going to respond to it. I'm not going to say nothing to it. I am going to politely delete that motherfucker from my feed because that is what you're not going to do. And I'm going to give an example of a bullshit ass comment that I saw on another YouTube video. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm recording. And I'm going to play this clip. A teenage human trafficking victim who killed her accused rapist has been ordered to pay $150,000 restitution to the man's family. 17-year-old Piper Lewis was sentenced Tuesday after she pleaded guilty last year to involuntary manslaughter in the stabbing death of 37-year-old Zachary Brooks in 2020. My story can change things. I know this My right story now. has changed me. The events that took place on that horrific day cannot be changed as much as I wish they could. That day, a combination of complicated actions took place resulting in the death of a person as well as stolen innocence of a child. At the time, Pause. Lewis. I know that's right. It took a lot of courage for her to get up and say that. And again, I am telling y'all this because I am a survivor myself of not one, not two, but three sexual assaults. One of which happened when I was 11 the fuck years old for two years. 11. E fucking 11 by my stepfather, who I lived with. And this is public fucking knowledge. And I'm gonna get into, cause everybody wanna talk about the justice system. I'm gonna get into how that shit is full of shit too. Yeah, I'm mad. Cause it take a lot of courage to do something like that. If you have not experienced sexual assault, you have no absolute right to say any fucking thing. I don't care. I don't care what your opinion is. You have no right. This shit is fucked up. She is being raped all over again with this $150,000 bullshit. Do you not know what human trafficking is? She was on the streets. I work with teenagers every day. I'm going to get back to the clip. I work with teenagers every day. I've been doing this for six fucking years. Do you not know? And most of the teenagers I work with are on probation. Do you not, you don't know what these kids go through. I have kids in my organization right now who have experienced some traumatic shit. Parents don't want them. They ain't got nowhere to live. They just out in the streets because it ain't nowhere else for them to fucking go. It's not always that easy. Everybody does not always grow up in a household where it's motherfucking rainbows and unicorns. That ain't how that shit work. So for everybody who got something to fucking say, well, could she call 911? Was she held against her will? Yes! 
It's not as easy as picking up a fucking phone and calling 911. That will put your life in danger. You call the cops on an abuser, a motherfucking criminal, they human trafficking and shit. You think they're not going to take one second to even think about killing your motherfucking ass? If stabbing him is what she felt she had to do in order to protect herself and get out of that, situation that she was in god damn it i'm all for it because we talk about self-defense all the time that was motherfucking self-defense i don't care if he wasn't raping her at the time i don't give a fuck if he was asleep something in her mind said you know what i gotta get up out of here and the only way i'm gonna get up out of here is if i kill this nigga if that's what she felt like she had to do baby that's what you do i don't give a damn i feel like abusers because i have three of them Abusers do not deserve any type of sympathy, especially when they violate young kids. I have no sympathy for them. Now, am I going to go out and kill my stepdaddy, Deontay, or David, the three motherfuckers that literally abused me? And yes, those are their government fucking names. Am I going to go out and do that? No. Do I have people who will? Yes. But that's just not the route I chose to go. But that's me personally. Everybody ain't the same. This was a repeat runaway who had been taken in by a man named Christopher Brown, who portrayed himself as her boyfriend while he trafficked her for sex. In May of 2020, she said Brown told her she would have to stay with Zachary Brooks and have sex with him for giving her shelter. She said Brooks raped her multiple times before she stabbed him after the final sexual assault in June of that year. Pause again. Because another thing I don't want to fucking hear. Y'all need to go ahead and watch the Centoya Brown story. Go ahead and watch that documentary. Because you're going to get people like, well, she willingly went with this Christopher Brown, who was her boyfriend, low-key her pimp, blah, blah, blah. Y'all think what little teenage girls get themselves in this fucking situation? Because nine times out of ten, again, I have already said, this is some shit where she probably had no fucking choice. If I was violated in my own goddamn house that I grew the fuck up in, everybody ain't got the lifestyle you think they got. These kids literally are not wanted. So if nobody wants you, you're going to gravitate towards somebody who does. The opportunity at the time sound real good. Because being abused at 11 and 12 years old caused me to believe that older men were supposed to take advantage of me because I didn't know no better. Nobody told me that my thinking was wrong. My daddy was dead. Nobody said, hey, Miranda, that ain't the way you should go. You're not supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be out on the streets. That was my way of coping with the shit because I thought it was okay. When I was raped at 16, it was because of decisions that I made based on previous history of me being sexually abused. It's a cycle to this shit. So if you don't understand, if you ain't never been in that situation, then you have no valid fucking opinion. Y'all do not know the, the life, what it takes to be a victim or a survivor of sexual assault. I am 30 years old. I was assaulted at 11, 16, and in 2020, that was recently. That will forever follow me. I will forever have PTSD. Y'all don't know what it's like waking up thinking that somebody is about to get you because I was abused in my motherfucking sleep. So that's why I got insomnia. That's why I side-eye every motherfucking nigga I look at. That shit don't never go away. You just learn to cope with it. And by doing something positive, which shout out to her because that's exactly what the fuck she about to do. And trying to help other teenagers, which is why I do what I do, is because I know what that's like. That's how you get stronger and heal through. But if you ain't been through it, then you can't speak on it. And if you're going to speak on it, at least have some type of compassion. Again, I'm going to get to a comment that pissed me the fuck off. And excuse the goddamn background. At this point, I don't give a fuck who making noise because I got to say what the fuck I got to say. Lewis was arrested the following day. She was originally charged for first-degree murder, but later pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter. 
While her lawyers had argued paying restitution to the accused's family was cruel and unusual punishment, after the sentencing, an attorney said it did not concern the 17-year-old. That's not the most important and pressing concern that she has. She wants to move on with her life. She's got her entire life in front of her. She has uh, all these opportunities ahead of her. So uh, the restitution is really not something that she's bothered by at this point. According to reports, police and prosecutors have not disputed Lewis was sexually assaulted and trafficked. But as Brooks was asleep when he was stabbed, they said he was not an immediate danger to Lewis. During her sentencing hearing Tuesday, Lewis's lawyers accused Brown of aiding and abetting sex trafficking. But police have still not pressed what? charges. Instead of facing 20 years in prison, Lewis will instead have to serve 600 hours community service with five years probation. While jail was taken off the table, she could still face prison time if she breaks her probation conditions. In the U.S., dozens of states have instituted safe harbor laws, giving trafficking victims some levels of criminal immunity. But in Lewis's case in Iowa, she will have to face her sentence. Sean Prevel, Global News. I just, I, and it's so many things I could just hear people say. And before anybody says it, she very well might not be worried about the hundred and fifty thousand dollars i am not speaking on her behalf i am purely giving my opinion because i feel that comment coming to continue the video saying like it's so many things like she, well he was asleep she wasn't in immediate danger you know okay let me take let me let me let me give y'all a little personal a personal testimony real quick a little personal testimony real quick. Let me hip y'all up to some shit about how hard it is to fucking defend yourself while somebody is the fuck awake. The third person, Deontay, who raped me, literally a few weeks later came through that motherfucking patio, got into my house through that fucking patio. Broke in my shit. I'm sitting in here. I just got out the goddamn shower. Talking shit, being drunk, coming up on me, getting all close. Hey, bruh, you in my house. What is you doing? What are you doing? Do you know how fucking scared I was? But in my mind, this nigga walking around, all I see is the scissors across the fucking desk. But them scissors ain't sharp. So I'm like, damn, if I grab the scissors because he proceeds to walk to my fucking office area and sit in my goddamn desk and still talk shit, I'm looking at the scissors the whole time. If I stab this nigga with these scissors and the shit don't fucking work, I'ma die. That's a man. A big one at that. And at this time, I ain't got the blammer yet. So, trying to literally protect yourself when you are in immediate danger is not as easy as it fucking sounds. You are li it's, it, you literally got to have an attitude, nigga, we about to die today. Both of us are going to die. You literally have to have that attitude. So, if you catch a motherfucker slipping while he sleep, and you feel like that's the only way you can get out, by all means, I don't care. Because what you did to me was fucking disgusting. You deserve to go to jail to, you know what? I got to be careful what the fuck I say on YouTube. But you deserve everything coming to you. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. You deserve whatever the fuck came or will come to you. Because karma is a bitch. And people get tired. You raped me repeatedly. Every time you did it, it happened again and again and again and again. And then now y'all raping me all over again by making me pay 150000 to this nigga family from the shit that I had to endure? How is that fair? And then everybody's like, well, she got away with getting no jail time. Like, she just got probation. I don't give a fuck. She deserved to just get probation. Hell, to me, honestly, my personal opinion, she don't deserve a motherfucking thing. But if y'all gonna give her probation, give her probation. And y'all done gave her them community service hours, baby. She finna go around and tell her story. She finna do her thing. I can see it in her face. Because I am that person, too. She is finna do her thing. So all it... For instance, let me go ahead and bring up this comment. Let me bring up this. Let me go ahead and run it back to you. Let me go and run that back to you. Comments say, if she really thought she was in the right, she would have taken it to trial and asked to jury 
of course, motherfuckers that, that want to troll and shit and say shit got typos. And asked the jury to find her not guilty. Convenience, she would take a deal. Another thing, if it was self-defense, why stab 30 times? Vigilante justice is what this group... Who is this group? Be more specific, my nigga. Be more specific. Who is this group? I don't like when people do that shit. Y'all people. Y'all black women. No, nigga, go and say what the fuck you want to say. Whew. Vigilante justice is what this group always thinks they can get away with. She should have turned him into the cops, and he should have stood trial for rape. That's how the law works. We don't know this man did anything because she deprived him of his day in court. She is getting off far too easy. She should be doing prison and paying a far larger fine. So clearly you and that, what's the fucking using that? Anime master, you white, you probably a robot. It's no way. What justice system, are we, are we aware of the same justice system? Because the same justice system that this nigga talking about is the one that failed me when I went to court. I tried to do shit the right way and it didn't fucking work. It ain't easy to bring a rapist to fucking court. It's not that easy. And nine times out of ten, he was an African-American. We don't just call the cops, and they're not going to just come pick this nigga up, and we say, oh, he raped me. Do you know how dangerous that fucking situation is? The justice system don't work for us. That ain't some shit. You can't just literally... I'm Fuck these headphones. You cannot literally just sit there and call 911. This man in here, he raped me, and I just need y'all to send the cops. I need help. I literally watched a girl who stayed two buildings down from me call the cops on her husband who was pulling guns out on her every fucking day, and she got arrested. So don't come at me with that justice shit and that trial shit and that jury shit. Fuck that. The law don't always work in your favor. Justice is not always fucking served. She don't deserve to pay a larger fine. Do you know the, tra the trauma she's gonna fucking go through? Okay, his family, they hurting. He dead, blah, blah, blah. He shouldn't have did what the fuck he did. It's called karma, bitch. I told y'all I was gonna cuss. <laughs> Shit, I'm mad as hell. My cousin knew I was gonna be mad when she told me. But let me tell you, I'm gonna go ahead. Let me tell you how God work. Let me tell you how God work, baby, because we finna play this. Woo, let me tell you how God work. We gonna play this other clip, right? And let me tell you how people show up. Let me tell you how God work. Let me tell you how people show up. Okay? Boom. <laughs> we recording. Bow. Let's play. Court-ordered restitution has surpassed its goal. Piper Lewis must pay $150,000 to the family of the Tonight, a fundraiser to help a Des Moines teenager pay her court-ordered restitution has surpassed mm -hmm. its goal. Mm -hmm. Piper Lewis must pay $150,000 to the family of the man she killed after he allegedly raped her. KCCI's Bo Bowman explains why Lewis is forced to pay the restitution and the legality of crowd for crowdsourcing this money. Well, Steve, in Iowa, our restitution statute dictates that anyone guilty of a crime that results in the death of another person must pay $150,000 to the victim's family. And even though she was given a deferred sentence, legal experts here in Des Moines say the judge had no choice to but to enforce that statute. We spoke with Drake law, law, a Drake law, law professor who says the only way to change that is to have the legislature change the law or have the governor commute that portion of Piper Lewis's sentencing. Now, in the 24 hours since the 17-year-old had the has been ordered See, to pay that money, <laughs> one of her former baby. teachers started to go fund me and raise right. more than she needed, almost $250,000 right now. And according to the professors at Drake, once that money is gifted to Lewis, she's allowed to use that to pay her restitution. To my knowledge, there are no legal That's impediments right. for her to be gifted any amount of money for whatever purpose they want to give her to. Now, the organizer of GoFund the GoFundMe page writes on there that all the excess money will be used to help Lewis go to college, start her own business, or That's help other about. young victims of sex crimes. That's what I'm talking That is what I'm talking about right there. That is what I am talking about. Baby, that's community work. 
I don't care if you feel like it ain't fair. That's community work. That's people coming together. That's people who know that that shit fucked up. It ain't even the fact that she she got to pay the fine. It's the fact that she has to pay the fine to the family. Not the court. The family. I don't need these no more. Of the person that raped her repeatedly. That's the part that hurts. Why am I paying y'all? What? She not paying the court. It's not a fine that she's paying the court. She is literally paying the family a hundred and fifty thousand motherfucking dollars. And she's 17. If that GoFundMe didn't exist, who got my because I'm broke as hell. So ain't ain't no way. So shout out to her teacher for even starting that GoFundMe. Shout out to everybody who donated to that to them motherfucker. Had I known about it, I would have too. Because baby limited, that's how God worked. Because that shit was fucked up. I don't care how you put it, how you want to put it. I don't give a damn. It's wrong. It is wrong. It ain't no it, that's it. It's just wrong. From being a survivor, I am telling you. I literally understand. I don't know specifically because this is her story and I got mine. Every story is different, even if it's got the same qualities. Baby, let me tell you, that type of trauma in your life and what it do to you, if you don't defeat it, I had my grandpa tell me I should have been a crackhead on the street for the shit that I went through. That is, for her to tell her story, it's going to help her, but she has a long road ahead of her, a long road of healing. I hope she literally get the love that she deserves and that everything work out for her, because it, it, it already started. When they started that GoFundMe, it already started. That's what you call community work right there. That's what you call people who actually care. That's what you call people who are empathetic and understand that that's a fucked up situation for a teenager to be in. I had, I had to. I had, I had to. I had to do it. <laughs> Y'all know I had to. It was coming. As soon as my cousin told me about it, I was like, uh-uh. 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 That ain't right. That ain't right. I got to say something. I got to say something right now. I don't care what time it is. I don't care what the neighbor's doing. I got to say something right now. And I'd have said what I said again. Like I said, if you get in my comments with that bullshit, it's going to be deleted, reported, and removed. Please don't play with me when it comes to something like this. Because I do not play fair. And if I don't remove your shit, then I'm going to try to come find you. I don't want to have to do that. I'm protecting my peace. So I'm going to go ahead and politely ask you to exit stage left. If you don't want to do it, I'm going to go ahead and do it for you. I'm about to do another reaction video. I got to do some funny shit after this because I just cannot. It's heavy. It's heavy on my heart. I got to laugh. I, I need a minute. Until the next video, I love y'all. Stay safe. Mwah. Bye.